Good morning, good evening. Are we up? I got about one minute left cooking here, then I take the size over to the workstation. It's the last stage of uh, cooking here. This is where I should get my spoon. Do I have a spoon? No. <laughs> I put the glue in last night in cold water uh, with half the amount of water that we need. I put it in last night, so it soaked overnight, fluffed up, got really soft. Then this morning, about an hour ago, I put the rest of the water in the two pans here, melted the uh, alum, and it's just been slowly simmering now. It doesn't boil, it's been simmering for, oh, I don't know, 30, 35, 40 minutes. I think we're there. I think we're good to go. I think we're good to go. Let's get the camera ready the other side. This is empty. It's all warmed up. It's been heating also for a half an hour or so. we are. Good morning, guys. Good morning, gang. Hello. Thanks for the comments on the video. The sound effects. I wanted some, but I just I just ran out of time. I fooled around with it for about an hour. Everything I tried just sounded super hokey. So whatever, I just had to let it go. I wish YouTube allowed you to edit videos, you know, so I could go back and put a little sound clip in there, but you can't do that. Okay, three liters of hot glue. Listen to that, the microphone is near the thing here. Hear that? The expansion of the metal. Let's move this out of the way here. Well, last time I tried to edit a YouTube video, it was no go. So if, if there's a way to do it, let me know, but I don't think so. You can put captions and stuff on. Okay, where we go? I moved the, I moved my camera out of the way because this is the space where the action is happening. Okay, we're good here. Just a minute, not quite ready. Non-slip. Okay, what we've got, this is a sizing stream, as you can see. I've got three different dimensions of paper to do this morning. I'm going to start with the biggest one. These are sheets cut in half already. I, I had six sheets here. This is super large Japanese washi paper. I cut them in half because I need a brush big enough for the whole thing. And this is for a batch of 100 prints in this year's subscription series. It'll be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and 12 sheets. So nine times 12. <coughs> and this is for Ishikawa-san to do I forget what month it is, July or August, subscription. And then on top of that, I've got some more paper, a ton more paper. And this is going to be for the Chibi Patreons, Patreon Chibi. So we still, we, we need way, way, way more for the Patreon campaign, for the Chibi prints for that. So that's this morning's work. I may or may not be interrupted by Cameron coming up later. We'll, we'll see, let's just get going. Hot glue doesn't smell. If I stick in, 
if I really get close to it, you can smell a bit of a soupy smell. There's no, no sickening, glue, sticky, awful smell here at all. It's really a dilute mix. We've talked about it before, the, the glue in there, it's this stuff, it's uh, Japanese Nikawa glue and broken up into granular form. And it's really not so strong by itself. And in here at the moment, there's 50 grams of this per liter of water. So it's really light. I can touch it like this. And I can, it's, at the moment, it still feels like water, but as it gets drier and drier, tiny bit of stickiness coming. Still not so sticky. Here we are. Now, as it's drying on my finger, it gets a little bit sticky. No, it's still smooth. It's, my fingers are not sticking together. It's still smooth. It's not water, but it's... Yeah. So it's not that sticky. It's not that strong. Is Tokyo tap water drinkable? Of course! Absolutely everywhere. Everywhere. You can find a tap in the park and drink out of it. There's no problem. It's the best water in the world anywhere. Japanese. I mean, you don't think they'd have tap water that wasn't drinkable. Anywhere. Okay, let's do this. What does it taste like? It tastes like water. What, what can I say? We have our friend watching over. Excuse me, you're gonna have to hide for a while behind there. Uh, where's my tape? Oh, I just used it for computer stuff. Why does it have a filter system thing? On our, on our, we've got a filter on our tap over here. Hang on a sec, let me turn it around. Someone's asking, the sink we have here, I shouldn't screw things up here, but whatever. The sink we have is a normal tap. That water is totally drinkable. What we also do, we run ourselves, we run a filter system on top of this because we're not filtering like bugs and germs because this water is not drinkable. This is an old building with really old pipes. We're filtering the water because we want no rust particles. We don't want any crap inside it that would go into this paper. So we're filtering for physical filtering reasons, not for germs or, or bugs or whatever. So it's not purified in the sense that it's uh, antiseptic or whatever. We're taking out rust particles from the old pipes in this 60 year old building. The water as it comes from the Tokyo system is about as clear and as clean as you could possibly get. We've had problems in the past with rust particles in our water. And again, it's from the building, not from, uh, not from the water supply company. Okay, where's my brush? What did I do with it? Here we go. Let that sit for a minute to soften up. The brush is just hard after being in a wash last time. This side view camera, is that flattering? I don't know. <laughs> video that went up last night I had fun making it but uh, it was it was frustrating and was, I tried to use for the first time and if you noticed I used two cameras at the same time so we're using the audio separately and the main camera and then a second camera and it gets kind of difficult to control all that stuff I'm running this by myself you know I was here last night doing all that setting up this setting up that trying to run two cameras turn the audio on I made a bunch of takes and of course I would forget to turn one of the three things on we also tried something new last night. Because I was so busy on the video with my hands, folding and opening and playing with that book, I couldn't run my teleprompter smoothly. So I thought, okay, let's be a pro here. Let's throw away the teleprompter. I tried doing a couple of takes without the teleprompter. But there were so many things I want to talk about. And I would lose the stream and lose the stream and lose the stream. 
So I, I went back to using it with a teleprompter, but I got no hands. So what I did was I got a, I got a USB foot switch. I put it in last night. I tried this for the first time last night. I used a USB foot switch, and instead of scrolling the teleprompter, it sets it up page by page by page. It pages a teleprompter. So I tried that last night for the first time, but I'm kneeling down. You tried kneeling down and using the foot switch. It doesn't work easily. So. so that last segment in the video last night, the one where I was folding the paper into the teacup, it was just, I did two or three takes and I thought, just screw it. It's getting late tonight. I'll put it up. And then I found out for that last final take, I had zoomed out of the camera by mistake and the whole thing was zoomed out and I was just in the middle. So if you're curious about it, you'll see at the last segment of that video, the video quality really drops because at the editing time, I did a crop and blew up the middle of it. So it was a bit of a disaster last night. Anyway, here we are. I think the brush is now ready. Have you noticed the surprised face at the end of the stick? Are you talking to me or somebody else? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Something in the video here? Your audio is crackling. It's a mic plugged in here. It's next to my... I think the crackling is this. So there's the mic. You can see the mic. That's the mic right there. And it's next to this thing. Oh, the surprised face. I see the two eyes. <laughs> Okay, whatever. <laughs> all right, okay, I gotta go here. I think the mic is ready now. I think we're all set. Let's do, let's get to work. See the pause there? Got a line in the size. I paused just for a second. Good split second if you stop that brush stroke. You get more liquid on it. It's not a deal killer, but it's, it would be better to be perfectly small. This is thick, thick paper, so I'm trying to use more liquid in the brush here, which makes it more difficult. This is indeed hide glue. It's the Japanese Nikawa, which is basically made the same way as Western hide glues. It's animal products, skins, bones, cartilages, rendered up, boiled up, whatever the system is. If you look on Wikipedia, it's called Nikawa, N-I-K-A-W-A, -A, Nikawa. Yeah, I'm not dripping the laptops there, but uh, not I'm knocking off here. Knock off once, knock off twice, lightly bend it, turn it sideways now so it doesn't drip. There's no drips as I hold it sideways. And again, sideways back here, over to here. So if I held the brush vertically, it would drip on the laptop. So. The bones of my enemies, yeah, right. I don't have any enemies. What do you mean enemies? Yeah, good, good, good. Nice and smooth. <laughs> 
no enemies anymore, right? <laughs> come on, come on. I'm a woodblock printmaker. No wood, woodblock printmakers don't have enemies. <laughs> The other woodblock printmakers on Twitch. Are there any? Or were there any? <laughs> I wish there were, you know, it would be cool if there was a community, you know. We need more people doing this. Wouldn't it be easier if the board you have the paper on had an extension on so the brush doesn't block down on the table? The board, what should we say? The board is longer than the paper. When I'm coming at the end of it, I've got to get off the end of the paper. I can't stop at the end of the paper. Here we go, up to the end and off. Interacting with the chat, eh? I know because it's a sizing day, I can do this. I can see the stream. You know, most you regular readers, you know, it's carving days. I'm sitting there carving. I can't see the stream. I miss most of the stuff. I see it when I eat my lunch or something or dinner. Sometimes I read through the morning's chat and I can see all kinds of questions I should have answered and things I should have responded to. But uh, on a carving day, I can't do that. And this is mindless work. It's okay. I just do repetitive things one and one and one. It's, I get a fairly concentrated on what I'm doing, but it's easy to talk at the same time. on the touchdown there, but too much there. You can even see it from your angle, right? You can see a darker spot here. Filming yourself doing stuff, you know, that's what I had trouble with that video last night, because I was trying to take those books apart and yet talk to the camera. So that's why I tried using two cameras last night for the first time. I think we're probably going to do more of that, but uh, it's trouble. And I'm still, I'm editing an iMovie, which doesn't allow double camera. So the extra camera had to come in as B-roll. I should make the switch to FCP. The paper here, yeah, it's from Ichibei Iwano-san. So. This is still the uh, order supplier. Uh, that bot command, talking about the paper, it's still legit. I know the Iwano-san paper, we're using it still. It's still whatever the world's best paper. There have been issues with it. The paper we got from them over the last few months has really come back in quality. It was terrible, terrible a couple of years ago. Just almost unusable. This year it has come back considerably. Either they've, they've realized what they're doing or something has changed at their end, I don't know. But even though that paper has come back in quality, we're still very much exploring with a new paper maker. It's been sleeping the last couple of months because both at this end and his end, we've all been very, very busy. So yeah, that bot command there is, is still, it's still legit. Okay, that's the top side. It's 12 sheets or six sheets cut in half to make 12. That's the top side. I'm now going to flip it over and do the back side.
No, again, this doesn't smell. This, this thing's not smelling here. I can, if, if somebody walked into this room, I think they'd know what was going on. You could feel something in the air here, but this is not a stinky situation. Ah, oh, soka, soka. Okay, I get you. Hi, hi, hi. Ah, oh, the episode when I visited the paper maker and the tubs and stuff was rotten, yeah, a couple of years back. Yeah. Was it last summer? No, no, two summers ago. I don't remember. Last summer, is it? Okay, let's do the back side. These new people on the stream here, you know, this, they're not sure what I'm making or what I'm doing, you know. There is one of the videos on our YouTube channel which shows the entire process. It's a 15 minute video and it shows absolutely everything we do from the first drawing, the sketching of the picture, right the way through to the delivery to the post office when we're delivering our prints. And if I get a minute here, I'll flip over to the YouTube channel and get a link, but I should have that video. Uh, Prioritized. Is that the one somebody's linking to it now? The, the one, the two second clips, two second clips all the way through, ending with the trip to the post office? I don't know. That's about the best way, I think, to show the, what the whole thing is all about. Yeah, it's about Chibi Heroes to show. So. I got a kick out of making that video. At the end of it there, I set up the camera on a tripod at the end of my driveway, turned it on to run, then got on my bike and and ran to the post office. I didn't go all the way to the post office. I went out of sight in the video, then turned around and came back and picked up the camera. But there was people who commented, oh my God, you left your camera outside unattended. You know, it didn't get stolen. Like <laughs> in a Japanese suburban community, that's gonna happen. You know? The rain sound, it's not rain, it's this, it's the expansion and contraction of the metal heater. It's not raining today. 
You can hear right here, drip, drop, drip, drop, this metal sound. Eh? If I take the mic away from it, but I can't, you know, the mic has got to go somewhere, and right there's the best place for it. I think when we're upgrading our systems here for these videos, I think I'll investigate a bit of a wireless mic, I think, so that I can clip a mic to me, put the thing in my back pocket, and just whatever I'm doing, it'll be okay. Bit by bit, we'll get this uh, leveled up. And in fact, if anybody has any recommendations, if you know anything about that, what would be a good wireless mic to use for this sort of thing? It would have to have, you know, the wireless thing here, and at the end it would have to be able to plug into the camera, so. Oh, I know what I meant to mention. The, uh, there we go, you can hear it. The thermostat just clicked in and boom, up it comes. <laughs> just when it got settled down and quiet. What's my price range? What are we talking about? Are microphones? I have no idea. I don't know anything about them at all. I don't know. Are we talking about tens of dollars, hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars? I wouldn't want to spend thousands on it. So, Mr. Koningami, I know the the work you did the last few days. Can we can we post those two links? The original share certificate, the, the base, and then the one you finished? Can you post that? Koningami's here. He did some Photoshop work for us over the past week or so. Uh, for the Patreon campaign, we have to give a share certificate to some of the Patreon supporters and he's fin he's handed in the finished job the other day last night i guess i don't remember yesterday and there should be a couple of links here to the starting point i gave him and then the finished thing he created for me it was really really cool very very nice job This is a double boiler system, eh? the two trays at the top, this one has glue in it, this one has just hot water for washing the brush later, and at the bottom of it, there's a, there's a tub, which is full of hot water, which is heating. I've got to mention these links, coding dummy is sending here, the image that you see, the image of Mount Fuji in the middle, this is a dummy insert, there will be a different woodblock print in the middle there. So what you see in the oval won't be what we're shipping, so I should have mentioned that, made, made it more clear. The Mount Fuji image there is a dummy image, the rest of it is as we, as we will send it out. The certificate itself will be printed probably at Kinko's on Japanese washi, and then the oval will have a woodblock print printed in, but I haven't started carving that part of it yet. I've really got to get to that now. What are we going to do next? What size board do I use? I want to use the same board, unfortunately. 
No, I can switch to that one. It's okay. Okay. Link to the original image doesn't work. Mokuhankan.com temporary share original. I think it's still there. Hang on a second. Mokuhankan.com. Hang on a sec, please, guy. Temporary share underline original dot jpg in the temporary folder. It's there. Ah, he spelled the word original wrong. Okay, got it. I'll keep quiet. Somebody's made off with my plastic cover sheet. There is it. There it is. Okay, this has to wait for 15 minutes or so before we hang it up. We, before I hang it up. While we're waiting, let's move on with another one. I'll switch to a lighter brush here. So the big brush goes in water, hot water. And the small brush goes into the soup. Ready? You soften up for a minute there, guys. Should have put that in a few minutes ago. If you're going to Kyoto, go and see Richard, Richard Steiner. He's a friend of mine, an American living in Kyoto. Better replace that too. He doesn't make the same kind of prints we do. He's working in a modern vein. If you're in Kyoto, there's a few places to go. You guys go and see Richard Stan to say hello. Then you've got to go to Teramachi. There's a woodblock, old woodblock print shop up on the west side of Teramachi Street, halfway up under the arcade. Tons and tons of interesting prints in there. There's no shop in Kyoto that does what we do that makes you know contemporary stuff and that kind of thing. There's lots of tourist type woodblock printmaking in, in Kyoto. Pictures of shrines, temples, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, look up Richard Steiner. He's got a website, Richard Steiner. If you Google Richard Steiner printmaker or something, his website comes up. Real nice guy. He's teaching. He can like do one-day class, three-day class, whatever, all kinds of stuff there. Okay, what's next? That's holding while it just sets. Got to do the front side of this. And I hope Cameron will be here, I guess, at some point, so that after I've done this, he can hold the fort here while I go and hang up that paper. So, Okay, let's go. Let's work. Now, this is much thinner paper, I guess, before I forget. I'm going to knock off some of that size. This is my favorite brush. It's our best brush. And it will die at some point, but at the moment it's still beautiful condition. Good, rich, thick hair, nice and long, longer than the ones we have from other makers. Why are Tokyo and Kyoto so similar? It's the same meaning. Kyoto is the word for capital. It's Miyako, the old word for capital. And when they moved it to Tokyo, it became Eastern capital. So the To, the Kyo is the same. The Kyo in Tokyo and the Kyo in Kyoto are the same 
character, capital. When they moved it here, it became Eastern capital. So what we actually, we're Tokyo To, actually, is the real name of what we are. We're Eastern Kyoto. Tokyo To, Tokyo. The To is different, you know, whatever. But it's the same. Kyoto is the capital, and Tokyo is the Eastern capital. Hmm. Hmm, Karakami in Kyoto. So NHK did a program on them a while ago. Very, very old place. It's a completely different concept from what we do. They're cutting on blocks. In that sense, it's the same concept. A block with some kind of thing being impressed on paper. But it's not woodblock printmaking in the style that we do it. <coughs> I think that NHK video is up on YouTube. There's a, if you hunt for it, whatever. I don't know, Karakami, Karacho, NHK or something. It'll come up. It's a 30-minute program. Very interesting stuff. They've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of ancient blocks there. A bit too much there in the corner. How much do our cherry blocks cost? I haven't the slightest idea how to calculate that. When I was buying them from an outside supplier, the cost was easy. The blocks for a typical Oban print, a large print like the Great Wave, they cost 13,000 yen each for a typical block. That was the price back in the 1990s. There is no longer anywhere to buy them. There's no longer a block maker existent in Japan. So we're making our own. We buy pieces of tree, we slice it up, we dry it, we glue it together, we sand it, we send it up for planing. There's so many small costs, including our own staff cost. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't have the slightest idea how much our blocks cost us now. Way more, way more than what it cost when I was ordering from a specialist supplier. But I've got no way to calculate it. And that sounds like a silly business decision. How come you don't know what your costs are? But we just have no choice. We spend what we have to spend on getting wood blocks. And it's not charged by the board feet or something. We bought that. I blogged about it a couple weeks ago. We bought a, a round piece of, of, a, of a tree, you know. And how much is it? And the guy stands there and says, mm, let's see, let's see, you know. And he's thinking how much you need it or how much you're willing to pay for it. And he's thinking how much he wants to get rid of it. The pricing is all just whatever. Uh, for normal business, the lumber yards over there, they do have sensible systems. They have board feet prices, they have auction prices, they, they know what they're doing. It's a sensible business. But our part of it is such an outlier. We're not part of the normal flow of the wood over there. So we're, we're out of it. So there's no sensible way to calculate the price. You know, that last piece of a tree that we bought actually was much cheaper than we thought it was going to be. And after we bought it and made the deal and we're ready to come home, you know, the guy says, you know, geez, good, I found someone to take that. You know, for him, it was almost basically garbage. It was such a small, unneeded piece of trouble in his way. It's about ready time for that heater to kick in, right? It's been silent for a while here.
No, cherry wood's the go-to wood for us. There's other, other wood would do some parts of the function, but cherry wood just has the best all-around, uh, what's the word, characteristics for everything we do. The right hardness, the right softness, the absorbability, the longevity. Modern printmakers could and should use anything, but to get the specific result that we want to have, linoleum ever it's nothing to do with our business and uh, I've never used it I, I can't describe its characteristics anything we wouldn't use it uh, the main point being for linoleum you need basically oil-based inks I believe we use always water-based inks transparent inks they're not inks they're pigments We print on both sides of the paper. No, 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 no. It's, it's pretty much impossible for what we do. The paper is quite thin, and when we pull an impression, it actually pigment goes into the paper and comes out the back side. So it would be next to impossible to print on both sides. So there's a famous image of an Utamaro print that was made that way, I guess pretty much as an interesting experiment back in the day. But in the normal course of the way we do things, we can't print on both sides. Someone says you want to try it, nobody where to start. Somebody point them to the acolyte page, please. <laughs> there we go. Flip your shot. to go on both sides. There's different reasons. Where did I put my oh, yeah. <coughs> There's different reasons why we're putting this glue on, this size on. And, uh, part of the reason for the sizing is that if we try to print without it, the pigment goes into the paper and it, it bleeds out all over the place. So this sizing liquid here, it has uh, alum inside it. And people back in the old days, they learned that when there's an alum mix, coated over the paper, the paper no longer bleeds and color stays where it was printed. 
Another reason for this size is that on the front side of the paper, when we put the paper on the printing block and rub, 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 without it, the paper would stick to the printing block and fibers would come out of it. So this actually toughens up the paper, the front side. And the back side's a different story. The back side, we're physically smashing the paper when we do the printing job. And again, without the you know, sizing in here, without the glue in there, it comes apart. So there's really three functions. I don't know how they worked all this out. We're talking about hundreds and hundreds of years of history of people trying stuff and exploring different things and, you know, trial and error. Okay, let's do the back side. Unknown Caesar. Okay, let's move along. I keep getting notifications up at the top of my screen here. YouTube, 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 comments, comments, comments. It's always fun the day after uploading a new YouTube video, you know, the comments are fun. <laughs> Sometimes a bit over the top, but they're fun. Yeah, the kanji characters there, what they did when they published those books, I didn't, you know, mention everything about it last night in the video, it just would have gone on just hours and hours and hours. When they're preparing the, there's the noise kind of some weird something to the noise as well. When they're preparing the line drawings for the book, they wanted to get things uh, in a sensible pattern, I mean a consistent pattern, obviously. All the pages have to be the same size, the layout borders have to be in the same size, whatever. So it seems what they did, and I mentioned one of those things, there were some drawings that are preserved in the Boston Museum of Fine Arts. I'm looking at those closely, the researchers have seen that what they are, part of it's drawing and part of it's printed. And what they must have done first, they must have carved a blank block that had the outlines where the pictures were going to go. It had the name of the book inside, it had a blank space for the page number. And they printed this and printed this and printed this. And these became the sheets that the artist used to do his drawing inside. So in the middle of the page, the part that got folded and ends up being at the very outside of the book, it's actually visible half and half. That's got the title of the book and the volume number. And then they would also carve one by one. What am I doing here? Have I coded this sheet? No, that needs to be coded. So yeah, so they would print a master block first that they would use to create all the hunched the drawings, the tracings for each subsequent page. So when they've got the blocks on the shelves in the storehouse, and there must have been a bajillion of them, any given block had in the middle of it the title, the one I had just a Jidai Kagami, volume 21, and page number six. Page number six meaning spread number six, which was half and half different things. So all the blocks carry an actual number. So they, could, they would be able to figure it out. And then the pages, once the printers have printed them off, of course, the stack of 100, stack of 100, stack of 100, goes to the lady, the ladies for sewing it. How do they know which one is which? Because every sheet, as it came from the printers, had the book title and the volume number and the page number printed in the very, very center of the sheet. And essential, otherwise the collation would have been just impossible. Oop, too much, too much. Dave, be careful. Talk too much.
This is thinner paper, and I've got to knock off more liquid before I make the stroke. Still too much. I hope Cameron comes soon because I got to get over to the next room to do some hanging here. That first batch is almost ready for hanging now. If uh, some of the people watching the stream here today are there also people who are involved with the Acolytes page, they might notice that a few weeks ago, or a week, couple of weeks ago, whatever, a lady posted a couple of examples of lino prints that she had made. She posted them on the Acolyte page. She's been experimenting with lots of different techniques, including the Japanese technique and the lino cuts. And she's coming this morning here. She'll be doing a print party downstairs at 10 o'clock. So I'll get a chance to talk to her then. She's doing both Japanese work and lino cut work. And maybe I can learn something. She can chat with me about how it works. And she's posted just on the Acolyte page recently about that. So a couple of hours from now, I'll be able to learn more about how she does lino cuts. So I have no experience with both sides, but she does. What's this, a bot fan page Facebook? Oh, I see, it's an automatic, okay. Hey. 
What's the recorder I use for the videos? You mean like the YouTube videos? It's different from this. This is a Handycam here. It's running. Just a normal generic Handycam. We replace them all the time. They break really easily. Modern Handycams are just nothing. A bunch of plastic junk. This one is a, it's a Sony something or other. A Sony Exmor R, E X M O R R. But for the work downstairs, what I use is a, it's a Canon EOS camera. It's it's a you know a, a digital camera which has a video mode, and I think it's a what's it called? It's a Kiss. I forget the Western name for it. They're called Kiss in Japan, Kiss Six or something. I forget the name. Um, Ah, audio, audio. No, it's, uh, uh, I use a Zoom, a Zoom HD. It's old now, it's three or four or five years old, maybe older than that. I love it. It's just, it's just perfectly pure, clean audio. I don't, I don't always get the best audio inside the videos because the video editing software is not the best. But the, uh, the, the audio records straight from me through that same lapel mic into a zoom HD recorder. We've been doing it that way for the past three or four videos. If you go back older older YouTube videos from me more than say a half a year old, the lapel mic was plugged into the, the camera and it was terrible. There was always lots and lots and lots and lots of background noise, something electrical background noise inside the camera. So I gave that up. I now do all the audio separately into a digital recorder. I hear the bell downstairs, and this is really, really good timing. This will be Cameron coming in. You can hold the fort here while I go and hang up those 12 sheets that I just finished a few minutes ago. This is perfect, perfect time. Yes, good morning. Perfect timing, sir. Perfect timing. I mean, literally perfect timing. Wow. I'm doing three batches of paper here on the sizing this morning. I did one batch of paper for the first half hour. It's flipped. It now needs to be hung. Okay. And the second batch is now coming to like three sheets left. Okay. So as soon as I finish this three or four sheets, I'll put you in the hot seat. Sounds great. If you don't mind. No. And I go and hang up that. And that's only 12 sheets to hang up, so it's six clips. Oh, okay. Then I'll be back to do the next one here. So thank you. It's a quiet stream. They're talking something, uh, chatting a little bit, little bit. You know. I don't know if you noticed. I put the video up last night at last. And, uh, oh, you did. Okay. Yeah. Good. Plus minus. I know. I gave up on the sound effects. I worked for about two hours. Oh no. I just I couldn't find. It. I mean, uh, I, whatever. I don't have a Foley set up here. You know, whatever. Yeah. There's no there's no musical instruments to do a xylophone going up the scale or something. I had nothing. You know. <laughs> I got a sack. Give me a break. I mean, good. You play Benny Hill. No. <laughs> No, thank you. So, so I just, in the end, I tried three or four things, and it all sounded just so stupid and hokey. And yeah. you can't edit YouTube videos once they're up. Yeah, once they're so up. I, I, took, I took the safe route and just left it blank. So. Okay. The boring safe route, I'm sorry. Is that my character? I don't know. I guess so. So there's that 24 seconds of no sound, and people think it's a mistake, and you know, whatever. So, yeah. Are they already commenting saying things like that? Like, the audio cut out. Yeah, yeah, so if one of the comments is that. So this is a problem with the audio at something, something, something minute, you know. So it sounds like I screwed up, which I guess yeah, I did. Whatever. It's highly yeah, it's I like your vids without cheesy background music. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not going to put, you know music all through these things. I did on mm -hmm. one or two of them. That Chibi Heroes video we mentioned a few minutes ago mm -hmm. has what I thought was sort of a, just a whatever cheesy background music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other problem with background music is always you get in trouble. You get takedowns. You get takedown notices. Yeah. One of the early videos I did, I used the background music that comes with iMovie. You know, licensed, royalty-free background right. music built into iMovie. I used that for one of the videos and I got freaking takedown notices within minutes of the thing going up. People made claims about it against it. Huh. And what dudes have done is they have taken the Apple iMovie background music, yeah. put it up somewhere, put a copyright notice on it, and YouTube sees that first, sees that you've copied this, and oh YouTube sends this, you have copied somebody's music. You know? 
Yeah, and then you get an apples, which they yeah, gave yeah, yeah. So, to do. But you're yeah. talking to robots when you make yeah. your counterclaim. It's only a robot at the other end, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I just don't buy it. Never, 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 never. Write the music yourself, so, or, so, right, or, or hire someone. And the one we did, the the one I did with the Chibi Heroes back music, we we bought it. You know, yeah. we, I went to a CC Mixer, which has all these, you know, find your music, whatever. Yeah. And we bought it, paid for it. You know. It was funny, the guy was a real nice guy. His name was Lang Langwa. Really, really nice guy. It was a bit more expensive than I expected. We basically bought him a new laptop, actually. <laughs> but uh, I really wanted that video. I thought it was going to be there for many, 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 many years. I thought it would be a good thing to do. So. Yeah. And he's you know, going to his website and stuff. He was, looks like an interesting dude who maybe needed some help to get plumbing as a musician anyway. Cool. So whatever, so we paid for it. Okay. But no, music on the videos, it's such a chaotic situation now because of all those licensing issues. Yeah. That one we linked yes, two or three days ago, the Facebook page, you know, the guy did an interview with me. He yeah. put background music on it and nobody in America can hear it. It's, this video was blocked in your country yeah, for copyright exactly. issues. And it's an interview with me, like whatever. Is so that it's why it's blocked in other countries because of the copyright issues? I thought maybe you'd just chosen regions or something. Well, it's the music on the background. You know, it oh. said it's blocked. What, I forget the exact words. Oh, wow. Okay, here we go. Let's copy the back of that. I am now going to put this in here. I'm going to turn it over to our, my, what's the word? My assistant Cameron yeah. to hold the stream here for the next five minutes while I go and hang up some, uh, what I should do. You can yeah, answer some tennis balls and juggle or something. Right, I'll, 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 if I can, you go ahead. I'll okay. move this camera so they can see what I'm doing over there. Is the mic still okay? Looking okay. I'm going to zoom in to the distant back room over there where I will appear in a minute. <laughs> Out the front window. <laughs> <laughs> what I'll pose the end. Okay. Over to you, sir. Five minutes. Can okay. I get by for the microphone yes. here? Excuse me. Unclip. Um, not sure how well they'll be able to see you. Oh, I'm going to put the lights on. Yes, it's still not totally in focus. It's, it's just all in focus. Don't matter. I'll zoom in around it. Yeah. The focus doesn't. Okay. Anyway, back in five. I gotta hang this up. Okay. Oh, we gotta cover that. It's gonna wait, 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 wait. Okay. So we're not gonna cover this one. Right. Okay. 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 Thank you, sir. Hmm. Different? Oh no. Cameron clone number 162. When do you normally do these non carving streams? Is it just whenever it needs to be done? Yeah, it's yes. I'm a I'm a super sign hit me yesterday. Where is my paper for the pattern chippies? I'm saying, like, did you put them on, on the calendar? And she says, yeah, I put it in the calendar, which I didn't notice. Oh. Uh, I'm going to aim this up a little bit. Not too high. Okay. Hello, better. Okay. Maybe that's better. It's still way out of focus, but we'll see. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's just whenever they need new paper, then they tell them. Sometimes a few hours in advance. Sometimes what? <laughs> just how much advance notice do you get? Sometimes it's a few hours. Sometimes a day. Sometimes a week. It's. There's more. I'll be doing more in the next few days. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Sofa butt lip. Thank you. I'll let Dave know. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> How are you? Hi, oh, hi, Jump it way back.
Uh, can I adjust the focus? I know it's really out of focus, but I'm not sure how to convince it to refocus. It's supposed to be an autofocus camera, but he is so blurry. <laughs> One got six to hang with back a minute. Okay. What's that rattling? The rattling is the the glue melted or er, um yeah, the, the water heater right next to it that has the glue mixed in with the water. It's cooling down now. So it's not quite rattling, it's popping, cracking. Metal cooling down. Never used that camera before, and it doesn't have a uh, um, manual focus ring or anything, so can zoom really far, but can't get it to focus. I just do this. Saying it is so zoomed, but it would not focus on focus because it can't find anything. It can't yeah. find a okay, whatever. And just, uh, just saying it just looks like um, it's just like Bigfoot footage. This is so very shaky. Zoomed in. Just let's move this tripod a bit over this way. Then sorry about that. What can I say? Work that had to be done. Yeah. What you want to catch is the dipping area here. Okay. And you should be able to take over. Somewhere on there, whatever. Okay. Like Sorry about that. Thanks. Thanks for helping out. Yep. No problem. I didn't really do much. Okay. Right, got one last batch of 20 sheets here. Have you checked the, uh, the mail? Did lots of orders no, come in overnight? No, I haven't seen anything. I'm sorry. No, I haven't. Uh, last night I was busy with that video. I got up this morning. I've just come straight to this job. So, oh, ah, you mean GW orders? So, yeah. Up to you. I haven't. Uh... Okay. Okay, are we okay here? It's shining in that light. Nay, let's see if we can. Try and get that light out of it. Okay, I wish you See you soon. Thank you. <coughs> okay, sorry about that. 
Okay, let's get back to work. Okay, where are we? 9, 12. Okay, I've got enough time to do this. I guess then we'll sign off when I've done both sides of this. I'll do all my hanging up on my own time so it doesn't have to bother you anymore. Okay. Why is it sticky on the floor here? Cameron has a ton of work to do here this morning. He's eager to get down to it. On our, what happened was yesterday afternoon, we received a, a batch of the great wave prints from young Yamamoto-san who was printing them. We gave him 60 sheets and he's had so many other jobs to do from other publishers that he had a difficult time getting to it. But they've come through. The, the 60 sheets or so of the great wave came in yesterday afternoon. That's my next job for the rest of the day, checking those, pulling out the bark from the sky, embossing them, getting them ready for sending out. And Cameron has been updating the mailing list. There's, you know, 300 plus people waiting on the mailing list. But you can't, when you've only got 50 sheets, you can't send emails to all 300 people on the waiting list. It doesn't work like that. But he doesn't know how many people will want to pick it up. So he started with the first 50 people, sent emails to the first 50. And he will wait a day or a couple of days and if there's no answer from some of them, that's it, bingo. He will just start sending to the next people on the waiting list. And then also, when I was speaking to Yamamoto-san yesterday, I thanked him a lot. Hontani, thank you. You know, there's 300 people waiting for this. Thank you very much. And he's like, how many people are waiting? I said, really, actually, at the moment, there's over 300 people. I'm sorry. So he said, well, should I do another batch right now? And I'm like, I wasn't going to ask him that because he's been doing so many batches of this print for us. We don't want him to become just a permanent great wave printer. I mean, life, you know, he likes printing, but give it a break. You can't just make the same print again and again and again. So what I had been planning to do was I was going to ask him to do another job for us first and then come back and do another batch of waves. But he said, no, I'm good to go. The blocks are ready. Pigments are all set. Good. If you want me to do more, I'll do another batch. So he's going to do another batch over the next couple of weeks. So we will have 50 or 60 more about two weeks from now, which will be good. It'll really help us chew through that mailing list. Waiting list, rather, sorry. He's a good young printer. He's doing really fine work for us. He's enthusiastic. And we try and take care of him, you know. We pay, you know, typical workshops here in Tokyo. When I was chatting with different printers, Namabe-san, Tetsui-san, you know, what other workshops usually pay for the great way? Because everybody's got it. Adachi's got it. You know, other publishers have it in their catalog, too. And the typical price to pay for the printer for that thing is about 900 to 1200 yen for, to the printer for the sheet. And that's just crap. So we pay 25 per sheet to our printers for it. And it's double, more than double what anybody else is paying. So the kid's so happy, you know. It's right on the typical line. Uh, when you look at any print in the catalog, the cost to the printer our goal is usually one-sixth of the retail price is what the printer gets. And whether that sounds high to you or low to you, I don't know, but it's actually really high.